Welcome once again to The Breakfast. The River State Governor, yes, on weekend said he never ordered the military to kill Igbos in Oibo local government area of the state, describing the allegation as untrue and politically motivated. The governor stated that the curfew imposed on the local government was to restore calm in the area after members of the proscribed Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOB, killed six soldiers, four policemen, and destroyed all police stations and court buildings in the area. Governor Wike gave the explanation on a live television program in Port Harcourt on Monday. The governor said the narrative that Igbos were being killed by the military is intended to shift attention from the, the despicable activities of IPOB in Uibo, which is a boundary area adjoining Abia State. Then you said you go and fighting a gang of criminals, and then you are not out of fighting people. Okay, so be it. So be it. I will not for my hand to allow criminals to destroy my state. It's because you say I love the people. If, they, if those criminals, few criminals are evil. That they should know that I'm not But the real people, the real people know too well that they have, in fact, in this state, they voted for me very well. They supported me very well. So it is difficult. It's unthinkable. But I will not agree that people will form a group to destroy my state. Not only destroy my state, even annexing my state as part of what they are thinking of. I will not agree. Or in any Joining us now to look at developments in River State is Uche Ukuku, the Secretary General of Hane Zendibo. A pleasure to have you join us on the breakfast this morning. Yes, sir. I so thank you for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. We want to take your reaction. Uh, before we take your reaction to what the, government, uh, the governor is saying, we want to have a sense of what is going on um, in Rivers, Oibo, precisely. Well, uh, what is uh, the development in Oibo, uh, the development there is unfortunate and sad. Um, we pray that uh, it does not get uh, to a humanitarian crisis. Okay, well, what is your reaction to the governor's uh, comments and his uh, current handling of the situation there? Well, um, my appeal to the governor um, is to understand that not all residents in the local government are members of IPOP. Are not, they are not, not all of them are members of IPOP. And it is important at this stage to temper justice with mercy and uh, leave the court view. Or, in the alternative, impose court view for some hours, say from 6 p.m. in the evening to 6 a.m. in the morning. But to impose 24 hours court view is. Uh, um, unfair in the circumstance. Uh, uh, sorry to interject, yeah. um, Salgi, but you don't believe that the situation and the events and the deaths that have occurred in that area necessitated the action. You don't think that action is justified? The action cannot be justified. The action to impose a 24-hour coffee cannot be justified. Because at the time the coffee was imposed, um, only 30 minutes notice was given, and most people do not have food, water, and medicine in their house. And of course, you know, under this COVID period, there is too poverty, and people don't have money even to buy. Even when there is notice, people don't have money to buy enough. So if you consider the fact that you have women, you have children, you have the aged, who are not in any way members of the IPOP, why trying to get to uh, arrest the IPOP suspect or ensure that those who bomb the police station and those who kill the policemen are apprehended. You cannot punish the old, you cannot punish the young, you cannot punish uh, the aged, the sick. 
particularly pregnant women, you cannot, even if it's, if it's unfair, it, is, it, it cannot, the action of the governor cannot be supported by logical reason. All right. I'm, I'm going to uh, ask, uh, because apparently most of the events in the last few days in Nuibo have been seemingly shrouded in some level of secrecy. Um, the governor is, of course, has made his statements claiming that six soldiers were killed, four policemen also were killed, all the police stations were burned, you know, courthouses were burned also. Um, can you give us some level of clarity what exactly has happened um, in River State in the last uh, a few days? Um, is there any truth to what the state governor has said with the killing of soldiers and policemen? And have um, members of the IPOB also lost their lives? Have all residents also lost their lives in, um, to this violence? Well, the, the governor is speaking from a position of the chief security officer. And of, uh, he's relying on information given to him by the police, the army and other security agencies. I'm not in a position to say he's right or wrong. Uh, the truth is that undeniably police stations were bombed. Some policemen were killed. And uh, IPOP had claimed that some IPOP members and other residents in people were killed. As I said earlier, the whole situation is sad and it's unfortunate because nothing can justify the loss of human life. I think that Ohanes and Ibo commensurate with those members of the families of those who lost their life. I will commensurate with those, uh, 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 we commensurate with uh, the bereaved. We pray God Almighty to heal the wounds in the hospital. But as I've said, all these things put together cannot justify 24 hour coffee on a local government area. A local government area with over 400 to 500,000 people. We cannot justify it. My brother, are you saying that, or, or will you not say clearly that pregnant women are not members of IPOP, children of less than five years, 10 years are not members of IPOP, the aged from 70 to 90 years are not members of IPOP, what of the disabled, the crippled, the blind, the dumb, the deaf, are there members of IPOP? What are those that are in hospital who are sick? Are there members of IPOP? All right, um, we'll, 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 we'll come, come back to you, uh, Mr. Okuku. That is the situation that we don't accept. All right, Mr. Okuku, we will come back to you to really dissect the situation with IPOB and what is going on um, in that particular area that necessitated uh, 24 hours curfew. Just stay on the line. We'll go on the short break. Conversation continues afterwards. And welcome back to the breakfast. Uh, we're still having a conversation with uh, Uche Ukuku, the uh, Secretary General of uh, Ones and Dibu. And of course, it's a discussion on the events or well, the, the things that have been happening in uh, Uibo River State in the last few days. Um, Mr. Ukuku, you, you mentioned or your concerns really have centered around the 24 hour curfew um, in. Um, that local government area and how it affects the residents. Uh, you've also mentioned that not every resident in Uibo is uh, an IPOB member. Um, but I, I want your thoughts on how you would, you know, rather have the governor handle a situation that seems to be getting out of hand, according to what has been described. If um, police stations have been burned, if, you know, security agents have lost their lives, um, how else would you have suggested that the governor um, addresses those issues um, as, as, as it stands? Mr. Okuku, can you hear us? Do we still have Mr. Have Okuku? I, I think uh, we sort of lost him for a moment. But um, I, I was... I was um, after you ask, I was actually going to ask him again. Uh, we know now from the governor that a, a particular area was, local government was renamed by IPOB. And uh, he is saying, what kind of effrontery 
would necessitate people to take such stands. Um, he also talked about, you know, unraveling people who had shrines uh, yes. with photos, you know, all those kind and of... Placing uh, a, I also heard about issues. placing a bounty yeah, on, the, so, on the head of the governor, you know, and... and um, so there's so much. So much. We don't um, even really get, have a clear picture as to what's going on there. But for the curfew, I understand the con concern being raised uh, by Mr. Ukuku. But then again, you worry this same innocent people might fall victim in a crossfire between um, people that say they are IPOP members and military officers. We already know that some persons have lost their life. What, the loss of one life, I don't know about other people, but the loss of one life should matter to every person. We saw what the U.S. did when one citizen yes. was, was the, kidnapped. The thing that you know, I'm hoping that we'll be able to establish this morning is... Um, and, you know, earlier I said that, you know, the, the events or the happenings, in, you know, in Obibwa seem to be shrouded in some level of secrecy. Um, I'm still not sure, you know, declaring a curfew is one thing. But what happens in the period when there is a curfew? The allegations of people being murdered. I've heard about, I've seen words like a massacre going on in that local government area that, you know, we still don't have any verification of. You know, I've, I was... Well, you know, one, I've seen one, one would be careful so we don't, you know... Exactly. Yes. But I need, I need to know what is happening after the curfew has been declared. Um, um, is I, a I, challenge... Well, my understanding of the curfew that we had, I mean, the one we had here in Lagos State, the governor said essential people on essential duty, maybe doctors, uh, people that are conveying food to places, pharmacies should be Essential open. workers, yes, no Essential doubt. workers. But, so but, what we don't know what the situation um, is now. Um, I understand we have um, um, Femi Lawson... Lawson. Do we have you? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, he's just joining us um, on the conversation for the first time, but we, uh, we've had uh, Mr. Uche Ukuku, the Secretary General, Ohanez Ndibo. He's been talking uh, with us on developments in River State. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your time this morning. Um, just before you came on, um, let, let, let's bring you in, uh, Mr. Lawson. What, what do you make of what is going on in Rivers State? A 24-hour curfew um, over um, allegation of uh, killing of officers and the activities of the prescribed IPUB uh, people in that area. What, what's your thinking? It's a very sad development. And uh, in, in every situation, even in a war situation, there will always be the essential report from Oiko in River State has not been expensive because that total lockdown, 24 hour something, in its own way, has taken a negative toll, not only of those with the targeted act, but other citizens who have their legitimate duties, who have their legitimate rights, you know, to move, and who also have very serious needs to be attended to. It should be noted that for those not even a pregnant woman can go to the hospital. The sick were restricted to their home. Even if it came to a point that people cannot even feed any longer. I expected, expected that the government should have taken an approach that would you know, be sensitive enough you know, to the need of others. Because the truth is that it is not everyone in that area that are members of this IPOP that the governor said the sanction, you know, is targeted at. And I think uh, that is one fundamental issue that uh, the River State government tried to address in taking that decision. Femi Lawson, I, I want your thoughts on how um, you feel the governor should be addressing the issues concerning the IPOB. Yeah. Um, if the allegations are true that they have um, killed police officers, they've killed soldiers, they've burned police stations, um, how would you suggest that the governor should be able to handle those issues, um, you know, without, of course, um, being dictatorial or, or uh, abusing the rights of other residents of uh, the local government area? Yeah, government at all times, especially in this period, must understand that we are, we are running a democracy. And it is not a government where a dictator can stand up and take decisions without checks and balances. If there have been, you know, violence perpetrated by a particular sect of people, 
it should have been the duty of government to use the instrumentality of intelligence and intelligence gathering to arrest and meet those people who are responsible for this act of violence. The truth is that if you look at the per percentage of people who are perpetrating this violence that have been alleged, they are not going to be even in the proportion of up to 5% of the total population you know, of that local government that have been placed under restriction. And what does this mean? It means that government on its own part excels in the area of intelligence gathering and security by imposing sanctions on people who ordinarily are innocent and are not supposed to be placed under the sanction of the, 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 the offense committed by a group of people. I had expected that the governor would have worked with the security agency to, of course, do intelligence gathering, make possible arrest and prosecution of perpetrators of this violence. They are not ghosts. They are human beings. They are visible. They can be traced. They know them. Rather than placing an entire population under lockdown for this number of periods, thereby causing hardship, I'm told that shit you know, on, on people, including children and, and women, who have no business you know, with, with this uh, group that you are fighting. All right, let, let me come back to you, Mr. Ukuku. Um, uh, before we went on that break, uh, we we're talking about the activities of, you, you were you know, emphasizing the fact that not all members um, um, of the community are members of IPOB. And uh, that uh, sentiment seemed to be shared by Mr. Lawson. It's almost like you are uh, of the opinion that uh, the governor is, uh, you know, killing a fly with a sledgehammer, so to speak. My question is, there is a particular concern that was raised by uh, Governor Wige. He talked about the effrontery of the group uh, to hoist the flag in a public school and rename a local government inside the state. If you were in his position, would you take this lying low? And what would be a decisive action to reclaim control of your environment? What would be my uh, the recommended action the government should take? Y yes, sir. Well, um, IPOP has been proscribed. Uh, IPOP is an illegal organization in Nigeria. At least that is the position of the law. I'm a lawyer by training, and I'm a lawyer for more than 25 years at the bar. So. The position of the law is that IPOP has been proscribed. I am not opposed to any action that will bring IPOP to an end. I'm not opposed to it. But what I'm opposed to is an action that will bring the life of hundreds of thousands of persons to an end who are not even members of the IPOP. Even if you're a member of IPOP and you have committed a crime, you are still entitled to the right to fair trial. You have to bring them to justice and put them on trial in a, in a court of law, in a competent court of law. That is the position. Even members of the Al-Qaeda, even members of the uh, of Bin Laden group that were involved in the bombing of the uh, United States uh, 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 World Trade Center, were brought to trial in the U.S. and other places. So you cannot equally take steps to violate the right to life of a citizen because you believe he has committed a crime. But we are talking about a humanitarian a situation that will lead to humanitarian crisis. That is the situation at hand. If you don't allow people to have access to water, if you don't allow people to have access to food and medicine, they are bound to die. It's not a situation that has led to a humanitarian crisis. That is the situation at hand. And I'm concerned of, because more than 95 to 99% of all the people in Obi Igbo are Igbos. And as the Secretary General of our nation, Igbo, I'm speaking for them if they cannot speak for themselves. They are Igbos. Not every Igbo man, every Igbo man supports IPO. I, talking to you, now they can have threatened to flog me in public. They are threatened to flog me in public. He had insulted evil leaders, Ojo Sokano, Rocha Sokrocha, Nneawodo, in the past. He has threatened to kill members of the Hanes and the Igbo. He has said more horrible things about evil leaders. And the first place I proposed was in the five-star eastern states. 
The governors of the South Eastern State prescribed IPO. So we are not controlling his activities at all. I have condemned his uh, verbal attacks on the governor of Lagos State. I have condemned his, uh, his attack on the properties of Ashwa to the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tidimbu. I condemn that myself. We are condemning his activities and we agree that he has almost turned himself a terrorist and he must be brought to justice. Do you but we cannot keep quiet when you post 24 hour coffee on a local government area that that he post and then you have to put the government has a duty to ensure that in course of this crisis the life of innocent people are protected. That is what I'm saying. All right. Um, the, the, the question I was actually, um, um, I mean, the response I was looking for was um, a way, a better way. I think that question has been repeated in different um, uh, frames since we started this conversation. Uh, but I, I think we need to put on record here and get your reaction to it. Uh, the governor's vehement denial that um, he targeted Igbos, that he is killing Igbos. And there, there is actually a video of him saying, how can he possibly be killing his own people. Um, what do you make of that? Is that reassuring enough uh, for you? And what actions should follow such comments? You said the governor said he, uh, he, he denied killing people. Huh? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Changing, it's denied. about changing the narrative about an attack against Igbos um, in River State. Um, how, how do you, how do you um, react to that? Uh, the governor saying that he has not been attacking Igbo people um, in any way. And how do we fix that narrative that this is an attack against Igbos? Well, uh, um, my, as I'm an equal man like the governor, I'm from a community called Elele. The governor is from where my prayer comes. He has an Igbo community. There is an Igbo I am I'm an Ikwere, so I'm an Igbo, and I'm saying here, for record purposes, that Ikwere are Igbos, and I need to be reported for it. So if I say Ikwere are Igbos, I say the governor is an Igbo man. And I, I have no apologies for some of the things I've said, and to what I continue to say. But what, he's not killing Igbos, he's not targeting Igbos, so he cannot be targeting himself. The governor cannot be targeting his own people. He cannot be targeting his people, but by omission or commission, an action can lead to the death of a people by action or omission. By commission or omission, what you are doing can lead to the death of a people. And if that happens, then your action or by omission or commission will be leading to the death of peoples. I'm going to uh, let me go to Femi Lawson now. Uh, I, I want your thoughts on. Uh, the allegations of Namdi Kanu placing a bounty on the governor of uh, River State. Um, and also, uh, what would you expect the presidency uh, to be doing at a time like this? Um, if we're talking about the loss of lives of Nigerian citizens, if we are talking yeah. also on the attack on security agencies, um, the governor himself, of course, as chief security officer of the state, you know, yes, but we all sure also know that he doesn't control the army. So would you expect word from the presidency at a time like this um, um, as it stands? First and, first and foremost, I think our people, particularly the young uh, people of the past and those other parts where the Igbos are president, should be very much of uh, the the character called Dylan Kano. He cannot sit in far away Europe and be breaking, you know, violence in his homeland of Nigeria. He cannot see if he is genuine about this struggle. It should have been expected that he would be at home to lead some of these, you know, uh, things he has been clamoring for. He cannot sit down somewhere and be getting young people, you know, against the state and against their own community and against their own leader. It is very unfortunate. And the people have to be very mindful of that character, calling up the canoe. But moving forward, the government has responsibility to protect the citizens. And I don't want to agree in any way with Dr. Wicked that he does not know or he does not have hand in the deployment of soldiers. We had a similar story here in Lagos when you know the government denied knowledge of the invitation of uh, soldiers to Lekki. And today, revelations are out.
that the government actually requested for the intervention of Sudan. I think it is all enough that every time we push it on the president, who of course, of course, also has a duty anyway to protect the interests of the people. But I think the silence of the federal government on the situation in Obi is not also encouraging. We expect that by now the president should have spoken on that situation that is affecting the very large population of our citizens. That place is an economic, you know, zone. It's a place where a lot of people do trade. And you see, there have been other locked down for a good number of days, and even the federal government is asking that something is happening, even when it is all military on the ground there. So I think the federal government should not be silent. The president should have at least come out and address the situation. If the governor of River State is denying knowledge, you know, of the deployment of soldiers, then somebody has to take responsibility. But we cannot perpetually put the people under such action in the name of law enforcement. When there are criminals in the society, identify the criminals and deal with them. Not that punishing innocent people, including women and children. It is very sad. But once again, I want to say that the young people of the construction must be weary of the antics of Donald Bicano. And they have to be very careful this time around. All right, let me, let me quickly um, ask Mr. Okunku, um, or, no, this question should go to Mr. Lawson, rather. The, the larger picture of our security agencies, it, it, um, Mr. Okunku said something earlier about um, investigating properly instead of, you know, closing down on an entire uh, city. The worry being expressed is that we resort to curfew when intelligence could have helped to fish out, said these people are people that are identifiable. Why do you think we seem to resort to curfew when intelligence could help us fish out these perpetrators, uh, these perpetrators, and bring them to book? Well, yeah, that's why I said it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reflection of our intelligence failure as a country if we have to lock down, you know, a whole community. Just because we are facing perpetrators of violence. And the question that should be asked is since the lockdown, since the country has been imposed on the people, how many of those perpetrators have been arrested? Rather, we have had a good number of innocent citizens that have been reported killed. Some have even died of hunger, some have died in their sicknesses because they have no access to medical facilities, they have no access to food. And that is why this is a failed approach. And I think it should have been immediately stopped when this. You know, tension has got into the peak when women, children are beginning to complain. So it's a failure of intelligence for us to lock down. How many houses are we going to use soldiers to test? And how do we identify who is an iPhone or not? Do they carry ID cards? Do they have their own color? It should have been a job of the intelligence community to gather intelligence about the characters of people there and arrest those perpetrators rather than doing a physical task, which will lead us to nothing that others know the further brutalization of innocent citizens. So I think it's the wrong approach and it has to head immediately. All right, finally, let's go to uh, Uche Ukuku. Um, lastly, I, I want your thoughts on um, the Johannes Indigo. Uh, the tenure of Chief John Nyangwodo will be ra wrapping up, I think, in December. Um, and uh, a new uh, government will come in, in, in uh, from the new year. But I want your thoughts on what Johannes Indigo can do um, at a time like this, in what ways can they step in to mediate or to negotiate or at least to play a, father, a father, fatherly role um, as um, the, of course, um, apex social cultural group of the Igbos? Well, um, uh, Mr. Kayo thank you very much. Um, first, let me put it on record. That when Ohaneze, when we came to office in January 2017, the first governor that received the leadership of Ohaneze was Governor Nyeso Wike. So we are grateful to him, we are thankful for him, to him. And then on that note, we uh, understand and appreciate the challenges and difficulties he faces. When a man, the counter said they should get, they should get his head. And then anybody that kills him, that will get 100, uh, 100 million. Uh, we condemn that in all ramifications. That is condemnable. It's an unacceptable. We can have the right to life. You cannot threaten him. You cannot kill him. 
We see him as a true friend. We see him as a true ally. We see him as a true brother. So Kanu is on his own. And of course, you will agree with me that in the past, Kanu has threatened to kill many Igbos. He has threatened to kill me, me, Ucho. Yeah, well, Kanu has threatened to kill me. Uh, sir, Kanu we... says things that make... In the interest of time, uh, Ucho Kuku, I just want your thoughts on how on is in Igbo. I, I understand, you know, uh, you've mentioned this before, that uh, he has threatened Igbo people, he has threatened uh, yourself and um, um, Igbo governors. But what I'm asking is, how can Ohaneza and Igbo um, step in now um, as the fathers of, you know, these young uh, men? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. I said all we need to, all we, we need to do, and we'll continue to do, is to pull our brothers and sisters, persuade them to leave Nandekanu alone. And the Kano's eye pop and what he's doing is unacceptable to Haneze and a greater percentage of Ndiwo and humanity in general. We don't support him, we don't subscribe to what he's doing. We condemn it because what he's doing will put Igbo in trouble in Igbo land and beyond. All right, Mr. Uche Ukuku, thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast and sharing your thoughts. Femi Lawson, thank you for joining us also. Thank you very much. Uh, he didn't quite answer the question as to what um, oh, Ohanese can... Ndibo can bring to the table because, uh, like you rightly identified, they are like the apex Igbo social cultural group and they have this, you know, uh, they are always vocal about issues beyond being vocal, beyond condemning. How can they engage these people? Yeah. It's a touchy subject. I, I worked in the Southeast for about 10 years. Um, I understand how they react um, towards these conversations, you know, both the IPOB members and, you know, the ONS and Ndibo members, the governors. Um, I, I'm, I'm even shocked, you know, when I heard Ucho Kuku, you know, say things like he said today, you know, condemning Nam Kano and condemning the IPOB and, and all of that. Normally, in the Southeast, you wouldn't hear them boldly say, you know, it out that way. So, um, I don't know what must be done, but I understand his concerns about the IPOB putting the evils in, in a bad light. Um, but I know that there has to be a way that these things can be, can be sorted out. Um, the loss of lives is, is in no way the answer uh, to any question and to any challenge. Um, and Governor Wike himself, the Nigerian you know, security agencies, Namdi Kanu, wherever he is, or the There's Southeastern something he governors. said that was instructive. Mr. Lawson said that um, if you want to be, a, you want to lead a fight, you should start leading from the from the front. You shouldn't be somewhere and creating chaos um, in another area that is supposed to be your home. Uh, you took refuge uh, somewhere else. Anyway, the the conversation touchy will, subject, yeah, you know, very I'll touchy, and we're hoping that the situation there will be addressed as soon as possible. The, the, the governor also talked about what we're going to be uh, discussing next year, and that's the end SARS protest uh, resuming um, in Abuja. But in the context that he talked about it, he worried about the damage that had been caused by the protest. And, uh, you know, he sort of said if government had listened to his earlier warnings about the activities of SARS, these protests would have would been avoided. Either. He also talked about um, helping rebuild properties that have been destroyed. But then that is where I have a concern. Even the Lagos State government has said they're going to help people rebuild their businesses. We know these promises come, but do they follow through? We already have cases of people in the hospital who we heard in a public broadcast that they will, their medical bills will, will be, be taken care of. The yeah. They're coming out to say they haven't seen a representative of the government in the time that they've been in the hospital. So when I hear comments that we're going to help rebuild, I, I face this with a lot of skepticism.